Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. I have been making conchas like crazy over here, and I'm excited to share a new version with you today. Many of you may remember my strawberries and cream or chocolate chip chocolate concha recipe videos. Well, I tweaked a few things and created a pumpkin spice version that is just as doughy and soft and perfect for fall. These also freeze well, so you can make a bunch and enjoy them over time. Although I can't say they last long in my home. So in today's video, I'm sharing step-by-step -step instructions on how you can make them at home all by yourself. So without further ado, let's get into this. Now this recipe can make anywhere from 12 large conchas to 32 smaller ones, depending on how you divide the dough. For the dough, you will need half a cup of milk, half a cup of canned pumpkin, a third of a cup of room temperature butter, a third of a cup of sugar, one egg, one teaspoon of salt, three and a half cups of flour, one tablespoon of yeast, and two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. We want to get our liquid to be somewhere between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So we will be microwaving the milk for about 30 seconds and then transferring it to our mixing bowl. So usually when I make these conchas, I use my bread machine to prepare the dough. I choose the dough cycle setting and just throw all the ingredients inside and press start. But I recognize that not everyone has a bread machine, so we are using my stand mixer and dough hook today. To the warm milk, add about a teaspoon of the recipe's sugar as well as the tablespoon of yeast, and then give this a little stir, making sure all of the yeast comes in contact with the warm liquid and let it sit for about five minutes, and soon enough you'll have a nice foamy mixture. Then you want to add in the rest of the sugar, the egg, the pumpkin, the butter, the pumpkin pie spice, the flour, and finally the salt. We want there to be some separation between the salt and the yeast, because salt and yeast are not friends, so we want them to come together gradually rather than combining them directly. I lowered my dough hook and turned on my mixer to the lowest setting and then turned it off, continuing to pulse the machine until the dough began to come together. This was mainly to avoid having flour fly everywhere. Then I turned my machine to its lowest setting and let it knead the dough for about six minutes. After six minutes passed, I scraped down the sides of the bowl and turned the machine back on. I let the machine continue to knead the dough for an additional 10 minutes. When that was done, I scraped down the sides of my bowl one last time, placed a lid loosely on the bowl, selected the proofing option on my oven, and set the dough inside. This creates a nice warm area for the dough to rise. If you don't have this option on your oven, you can warm your oven to 170 degrees and then turn the oven off and place your dough inside the oven. Or you can always find a warm place in your house to set the dough and leave it there until it doubles in size. While that is rising, let's go ahead and talk about the streusel topping. You are going to need one cup plus one tablespoon of flour, two thirds of a cup of powdered sugar, a half a cup or one stick of butter, a teaspoon of vanilla, and two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Add these ingredients to a bowl and mix until a Play-Doh-like consistency forms. In a bit, I will also be adding a small amount of orange food coloring to this topping so we can have conchas that resemble pumpkins, but this is not necessary.
let's set this aside for a moment and revisit our dough. Now that it has doubled in size, we want to coat our counter with some flour, or in my case, I'm using a silicone mat, and plop our dough down. Then divide the dough into the number of conchas you want. On this day, I divided the dough into 16 close to equal portions. If you want them to be completely identical, you can always use a food scale and make sure that they weigh the exact number of grams. To form the dough balls, take the dough in your hand and pull the outside portion of opposite ends of the dough up to the center and pinch together. Continue to pull dough from the outer edges and pinch together rotating the dough in your hands as you go. This will make the dough that is touching the palm of your hand have a nice smooth surface. Repeat this process until all your conchas have been shaped. To smooth out the bottom of the concha, you can place it down on the counter and cup your hand over the dough ball and move it around in a circular motion. Then place them on your baking sheets. To half of my conchas, I will be adding in some chocolate chips to the centers. Let me know down below in the comments if you also like chocolate and pumpkin together. Once the conchas have all been shaped, we are going to take softened butter and spread it on top of each dough ball. This helps secure the streusel topping to the top of the conchas. Recall that to make the dough, we only used a third of a cup of butter. That isn't quite a full stick. So save that little bit that's remaining for this step. Once all of the dough balls are coated in butter, it is time to add the streusel topping. Take the streusel that we mixed before and give it a little knead, especially if it's been sitting out for a little bit. Then divide it into equal sized portions. In my case, I am making 16 equal balls of streusel topping. If you want to be totally precise, you can use a food scale. We are going to take our streusel balls and flatten them out so that it is about a quarter of an inch thick. I like to sandwich my ball in between two pieces of parchment paper, and then you can use a large flat surface to press down, flattening out the streusel. I have found that my dough scraper works great for this step. Then take this flattened streusel and place it on top of one of your dough balls. To give the concha a pumpkin design, take your dough scraper or knife and press down into the streusel four times, dividing it into eight equal portions, sort of resembling eight slices of pizza. Then we are going to repeat the steps until all of the conchas are ready. Once assembled, I set them on my stovetop to rise while my oven preheats to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we throw these in for about 13 to 15 minutes, depending on the size of your conchas. I have found that when I make 24 to 32 smaller conchas using this recipe, they only need about 12 to 13 minutes in the oven. But when I make 12 larger ones, they need about 15 minutes in the oven. They are done when the exposed dough is a nice golden brown.
Once the conchas have cooled down, we are going to add a couple more decorations to really make them look like little pumpkins. First, we are going to cut up a chocolate bar into little rectangles to stick into the top center of the conchas to resemble the stem of the pumpkin. After the stems have been added, we are going to melt some white melting chocolate and add some green food coloring so we can pipe out little green swirly vines on the tops of our conchas. This is definitely an extra unnecessary step, but it really does make the final product look that much cuter. My family enjoys these most when they are fresh out of the oven, but since we aren't going to eat them all in one sitting, I tend to package up the rest in airtight containers and keep some on the counter or fridge and place the rest in the freezer. They defrost rather quickly and are just as soft and doughy and delicious as the day I made them. Let me know down below in the comments if you plan on giving this recipe a try. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you are new I would love it if you stick around and subscribe to catch all of my motherhood content and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.